Hi everybody, let's get started with today's reading lesson. For today's reading lesson, we are going to be talking about the text structure of problem and solution. Our lesson is going to look like this. First, we'll, we will review the objective for the lesson. We'll discuss what exactly problem and solution is. We will identify problem and solution within our text where we have an I do, we do, you do section. We'll use our story from day one, the Stephanie Qualick inventor story for the um, I do, you do, we do part. Then we'll have some extra problem and solution practice at the end. For this lesson, the objective says students will be able to identify problem and solution relationships within text. That goes along with one of our state standards that says that students should be able to describe a character, setting, or event in a story or play, drawing on details in the text and how that impacts the plot. The text structure is the author's method of organizing a text. Sometimes authors use a text structure in which they present problems and then explain their solutions. We've talked about several different text structures that authors use. We've talked about the description text structure, comparing and contrasting, cause and effect, that was just last week, and sequence. Today we are just focusing on problem and solution. In this column, it says some signal words you might notice in problem and solution structure is the word problem or issue, since, as a result, solution, idea, so, leads to, and causes. Some of the tips for this text structure say, ask yourself what is the problem and what is the solution. Look for the problem first and then the solution. But what is problem and solution? Well, problem and solution tells about a problem and then gives one or more solution. For example, in this poster, the problem is the glass of milk was spilled. The solution could be use paper towel to clean it up. A problem is something in the story that goes wrong. The solution is how that problem gets fixed. When trying to figure out the problem, ask yourself, what's the problem that the, that the character has? Or what does the character need or want? That might help you figure out the problem. Then for the solution, just look to see how that problem gets fixed. Identifying the problems and the steps or actions taken to solve them can help us understand the main ideas of the text. To find problems and their solutions in a text, we can look for signal words such as consequently or as a result. What does our book say about problem and solution? In our book, it says, in a text with a problem and solution structure, the author presents problems and explains the steps taken to solve them. The way a problem is finally solved is called the solution. Signal words such as consequently and as a result can indicate a solution. For the next slide in our presentation, you're going to need to get that Your Turn Practice book out and find page 222. On page 222 in the Your Turn Practice book, 
it should be a graphic organizer. We're going to use it to help identify and record problems and solutions from the story, Stephanie Qualic. If you need to pause the video now to get your book and find the correct page number, do it now and then turn the video back on when you're ready to go. Let's start with the I do part of this lesson. I will begin by reading part of the passage and looking for a problem that Stephanie has. I will then identify the solution and record the details in the graphic organizer. The graphic organizer is very similar to the one on, um, in your practice book that you should already have open, page 222. The text says, She was not the kind of student who caused mischief, and she worked hard in school. Stephanie's teachers spotted her talent and talk to her about careers in science. With their encouragement, Stephanie studied chemistry in college. She had hoped to go on to medical school, but could not afford it. So I have to think about what is a problem that Stephanie has in this piece of text. And the problem that I identified was from that very last sentence that I read. It says, she had hoped to go on to medical school, but could not afford it. That's her problem. She could not afford to go to medical school. So in my problem box up at the top, I want you to write, Stephanie Qualick can't afford to go to medical school. That's her problem. If you need to pause the video for just a second to get that box filled in, do that now, then turn your video back on so we can talk about the solution box. So I have the first problem written in the first problem box. I'm going to keep on reading so I can find the solution to that problem. We said the problem was Stephanie Qualick can't afford to go to medical school. The next paragraph says, Consequently, Stephanie took a job working at a textile lab. She planned to save up enough money from her job so that she could go on to medical school. So what is the solution to Stephanie's problem that said she couldn't afford to go to medical school? Well, that word consequently is one of those key words that indicates a problem and solution relationship. So in my solution box, I wrote, she goes to work at a textile lab to make money. You need to write that in your box now. The problem, Stephanie Qualick can't afford to go to medical school. Her solution to that problem, she goes to work at a textile lab to make money. In the text, that word consequently stood out to me as one of those key words to indicate a problem and solution relationship. Now we are going to fill in the next problem and solution row of your graphic organizer together. As we continue reading in the passage, we are going to find another problem that Stephanie has. How could we put this problem into our own words? So let's read together. Stephanie brought her strange liquid to the worker in charge of spinning liquid into fibers. He looked at Stephanie's solution and laughed. He thought it was hilarious that she believed it could be made into fiber. It looked too much like water and might even clog the spinning machine. But Stephanie kept urging him to spin it until he finally agreed. So I want you to think, what is a problem that Stephanie is having in this excerpt from the text? In 
if you said a coworker didn't want to spin the solution into fiber, you are right. So that's one way that we could write it. I didn't copy it directly from the text. I put it into my own words and said, a coworker didn't want to spin the solution into fiber. Remember, she said that the coworker laughed at her and didn't even want to basically give her the time of day. We need to, in the next box, think about the solution to her problem. Let's go back to the text. It says, he thought it was hilarious that she believed it could be made into fiber. It looked too much like water and might even clog the spinning machine. But Stephanie kept urging him to spin it until finally he agreed. When he followed the procedure, a strong fiber began to form. So what is the solution to Stephanie's problem? Remember we said her coworker didn't want to spin her liquid. So what did she do to solve that problem? I want you to pause your screen now, pause the video, write in your solution box the problem or the solution to Stephanie's second problem. We said her coworker did not want to spin her liquid. How did she solve that problem? What was the solution? Write that in your box. When you're done, turn your video back on and we'll check to see if you had the right answer or something very close to it. Remember, it doesn't have to be word for word and you don't need to copy it directly from the text. You can put it in your own words. For the problem that said a coworker didn't want to spin the solution into fiber, what was Stephanie's solution? Hopefully you said something like this. Stephanie convinced him to do it and it worked. Now, if you said something a little different, you might have said something like Stephanie urged him until he finally agreed to do it and it worked. Or Stephanie begged the coworker to spin her solution and it worked. Or it then it turned into um, a strong fiber. It doesn't have to be exact. Just know that her problem was her coworker didn't want to spin her solution and the solution or didn't want to spin the solution that she made and the solution to her problem was that he, Stephanie finally convinced him. She had to ask him several times. And when he finally did it, it worked. For the you do part of this lesson, I have put another excerpt from Stephanie Qualick Inventor into your Google form. For the first question, you will need to identify the problem in the text. And then for the second question, you will need to identify the solution to that problem. It's just a paragraph from the Stephanie Kowalik um, story in our book. First, you'll find the problem, then the solution. Then after that, you'll have a couple of more problem and solution little paragraphs to read for extra practice.